Are you itchy and scratchy to know what the heck's going on with your B-Pro, your Polkadex, or your Polka Market uh, crypto? Well, if you are, you're at the right place. Hey, new viewers, here's what this channel does for you. I know that you're probably mostly watching crypto YouTubers who cover news and fundamentals because that's most of what's out there, and almost all the traders out there primarily cover Bitcoin and or Ethereum. So what my channel does, it has a, I have a niche here where I help newer investors um, or hodlers or traders who like altcoins, I help you understand a little bit more about what's happening when you're clicking around with your money to get Pokemon cards, because this is not financial advice, it's for entertainment and educational purposes only. All my videos are, but anyway, I help you understand what the heck uh, you're doing on a statistical basis, or so you know if you're in a favorable, favorable scenario before you click with your mouse on an exchange. Other channels aren't doing that. They're just hyping mostly. They're talking about coins after they've already gone on a run, and typically those are good times to be selling. So, um, so that's what my channel does. It helps you out in your crypto journey. So if that sounds good, everybody, take a quick second to hit like, leave me a quick comment down below, and we'll get rolling into this uh, B Pro Pokedex and Poke Markets video. All right. So raise your hand if you're one of those people who said, "Ha ha, you sold and took profits at .0888." This is where I took profits, and I let everybody know. I let my community know first. This is where I took profits. People on YouTube made fun of me, and those same people haven't sold. What was my buyback target? 0 0.0065. Where did BPRO hit? 0 0.006. Who's laughing now? In addition to that, here's why you take profits, even if it's way too early. With um, with the money uh, that I got for my uh, BPRO spot trade, so I did not unstake to do this, right? I was just utilizing BPRO as a spot position, uh, potentially to garner more crypto, whatever crypto didn't really matter. I just wanted to take profits. Well, guess what I did with it? I bought Polk. I ran up Polk, took profits, then I moved some of that in the mover ran this up and I took profits on the exact right day of mover. I took profits here. Did I get the top of the wick? No, I did not, but I did hit it on the right day. I sold at that line at 470 something because I wanted to sell at the line and I did sell at the line. So I took profits three times with that original B pro buddy. So seriously, who is laughing now? This is why you take profits and you don't make fun of YouTubers who know a decent amount about charts, especially if you're a new investor who doesn't know much about charts. I saw your comments. Seriously, like, so if you're one of those people, just, you know, don't feel bad about it. And, but I am calling you out, but guess what? A lot of my subscribers and my Patreon community members were the same people. I, I probably have a hundred uh, patrons who the reason they're patrons, they thought I was full of crap. When I made a video right as B Pro was doing this, I called the top exactly and let people know very specifically, it's not gonna pass this. And I specifically said, Profit taking right now is a winning strategy. And then 15 seconds later, I said, it's going to move sideways for a minimum a month or two, and it could easily hit a penny. And I said, hitting a penny is likely within my top three likelihoods. That was made on March 16th. If you don't believe me, go watch the video. I'm holding a fireball. It's one of my more different uh, looking thumbnails. And um, so, but they thought I was full of crap. I said, this is the top and it's gonna hit a penny. Well, guess what? Both were right. Now it didn't go lower than a penny, but a, but a lot of those naysayers, after they saw it happen, they like those are some of my you know most loyal patrons and on, on uh, in the Discord community here. So I, I don't feel bad if that was you. Make in front of me um and thinking you're making fun of me but my moves were pretty good um and i don't care about selling too early i just care about selling profitably it's profitable trading over time not perfect trading every time so if you if you try to perfectly trade every time that means you're not selling because you think you're it's going to keep going up you're just a buyer and prayer right so hopefully you know this could be a learning lesson i mean it, you could see my moves i took profits three times three times i increased my bags way more than y'all did right the, the ones who were making fun of me about selling too early because yeah, I know you didn't sell this top and you're full of crap if you say you did. Now, could you have sold near the top? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Honestly, it wouldn't be hard to take profits a little bit better, you know, because uh, I took profits very early, but where I moved them, I actually got better gains than this. My gains in Polk plus Mover were better than 100, were better than that, right? And that would be assuming selling the top, which you can't. Right. So um, I like my move. Uh, I like the moves that I took and uh, I was sticking to my guns because I knew my price target had a strong chance of being hit, even though this made me doubt it a little bit. I was like, oh, crap. Under a penny might be a point of the uh, thing of the past. But my price target was point double oh six five. OK, 
okay? I have videos of it, everything. Um, so it, it hit. Now, could it go lower? Absolutely, absolutely. Could, um, so B Pro could easily come down, uh, hit this line. So if if uh, Bitcoin goes back down to 40K, B Pro is probably going to visit sub 0 0.005. If Bitcoin goes to the mid 30s, you're probably going to wick, you might get a wick down to 0.003. I, I know that sounds crazy. But I'm saying wick, quick, quick recovery type of deal. My phone's going off. A uh, quick recovery type of deal. So trying to pick some up between 0 0.003 and 0 0.005 might be an okay strategy. 0 0.005 to 0.003, just scatter some limit buys down there and try to pick some up. If they never hit, who cares? Cancel them and then market buy. You know, if the if the market recovers quickly, there's nothing lost, right? So in this case, you know, you might not like the the sound of B Pro at 0.004 or whatever, like you split it in the middle. You might not like the sound of that, but if your limit buys hit because you pick it up down there, you're going to be really happy. <laughs> like that's going to be a good buy. But and here's the cool thing about that idea. It's a low risk, high reward scenario. And in trading, even though those high ri th those high reward, low risk scenarios, you don't always capture them. But as long as you keep setting yourself up to keep trying, eventually they will happen. And since it's such a low risk anyway, why would you be scared of those numbers? And chess pound say, oh, it's never going to hit that. Well, my technical analysis has worked now, like, you know, this far hit my target, right? So if Bitcoin hits those, this is probably going to happen, folks, if Bitcoin keeps moving down, I'm telling you. 0.005, um, uh, 0 0.005, or actually 0 0.0048 is going to be right around Bitcoin smacking at 40K. 40K Bitcoin is going to equal B Pro at 0 0.0048 roughly. It's, it's going to it might wick down there, but you can still pick that up. If Bitcoin heads even farther, P Pro is probably going to break this lower low structure or or tag it. Watch, watch where this hits. Watch. It hits the origin line at point double oh three. Right. So downside targets, don't be fearful of them. It is it sets you up for a potential very low risk, high reward. Why would you complain about that, right? So don't be fearful of downside targets. And so that's what I got for you. If the market recovers, well, B Pro's probably going to recover, come right back into a range, just like Bitcoin. So let's say Bitcoin next week closes above the weekly 21. If you haven't looked at my um, my uh, Bitcoin video from today, you might want to go check that out. So go, you know, go to my um, go to my channel and look at my most recent Bitcoin video. If Bitcoin pops up, B Pro's probably going to come right back into this range and it's going to get right back above 0 .00, uh, 0.009. They'll probably revisit this area and um, use the same origin line as resistance for a minute and then break back into the range, uh, the, the upper, the middle of the range here. That's probably what will happen. So now you have downside and upside targets. All right. If Bitcoin keeps moving sideways around 42K, well, B Pro is probably going to hold this uh, origin line here. And then whenever Bitcoin recovers, this will recover, pop right back into this range at 0.009. I mean, it's it's moving with Bitcoin, folks. All right. So the analysis on B Pro is very easy. But the only thing I really want to stress to you is this. Two things. First, when I take profits, don't make fun of me because I, my track record is really good uh, with people, me taking profits, letting you know, and me getting made fun of for 45 days. Uh, I think my hit rate's 100% that I'm the last one laughing, right? I get the last laugh. <laughs> Even though a lot of people laugh at me for 45 days, let's see. 38 days in this case, almost 40. Yeah, right at 40 days. Okay, getting laughed at there. But my track record's like, when I when I voice these things, my track record's excellent. So don't don't make fun of me when I say I take profits. Um, this, it doesn't set you up for a winning scenario. But second, and way more importantly, if I can, you know, stop stroking my ego there. Sorry, I try not to do that much. But I just, I do that mostly for you. So you're not scared to take profits. Any, especially taking profits too early. Don't be scared to do that. Um, in a non-egotistical way, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> But the second uh, and more important thing is with, you know, what I'm trying to say here is when you hear me or any analyst, OK, talking about price action, mention downside targets and you're holding a big bag of the stuff and you don't want that. Well, how about you take action so you can capitalize on that? Me And how do you do that? <gasps> by taking profits at logical areas. So then you can capitalize on it. You can't capitalize on downside movement if you're all in, right?
Actually, there are some strategies. If you set stops, you can actually. If you had set a stop, you know, down here perfectly, you could you could be buying a little lower, but you'd still be selling lower than where I sold and took profits and took profits two more times after that, right? So those are the two main points of this video. Let's move on to uh, Polk and um, Polkadex. Let's do PDEX first. PDEX is looking really good. I honestly, I'm shocked it's still in this range. This is really healthy, folks. It didn't fall out of its range. I mean, there's nothing else to say. Um, and that sets this up to if Bitcoin goes to 40K, PDEX will probably hold this line. And that line is at uh, about 1750. I mean, this, this asset's looking, <laughs> this looks really strong. I'm not going to lie. It's uh, It tagged its weekly 21, just like Ethereum and Cardano did. It's still above it. Looks good. Um, so if Bitcoin moves down uh, to, let's say, sub 40, I could see $14 being hit. So this next line down. But Bitcoin's really going to have to race down in order for Polk to make that like 30% move or whatever that would be. Yeah, 25% move. So Bitcoin would have to, you know, break some echelons, maybe even do sub 40 in order for PDEX to dip down in here, right? Um, so because PDEX, you know, did not move as aggressively down on a structural basis, on a percentage base, it probably moved more. But on a structural basis, it's looking extremely sound. Yeah, 20% to the downside is kind of big. Yes, but structurally, it's way more sound than even Ethereum and Cardano. Like this is very sound structure. It looks fantastic. This is a good asset to be holding during a downturn. Um, structurally, it, it looks it looks really good. Because if it's structurally sound now, well, once the market turns around, what's going to happen? It's got a hell of a foundation to really spike up. Same thing for Polk. Look how beautiful this structure is. And look at the reaction. This is really good, folks. I mean, I bet it only hit its daily 55. Does it have 55 days in it? Nope, it's below its daily 55. All right. Well, still, structurally, it looks fantastic. So these types of assets that are holding up structurally, their, their structural integrity. And again, remember when I made this projection long before it actually hit it? I said, I think it has to hit this projection. There you go. It's now hit it. Uh, PDEX has yet to hit it, but it's probably going to hit somewhere on the... It might only, you know, peek its head right here. But I'm telling you, it's going to hit this projection sometime. It's going to hit it. It could hit it sooner like this, going back to PDEX. Could hit it here going sideways. Could go up, then sideways hit it. But, uh, but anyway, so uh, just to follow up on my projections, uh, getting hit on Polk. So Polk, honestly, it looks fantastic as well. It's a younger asset. It's weekly 21 is currently overpriced because it took such a nosedive down in July. Like this had a 95% drop. I mean, this was a nasty drop. So it's got a lot of making up to do, um, but that could just mean better buying uh, levels if you are bullish on this asset, better better times to buy. So I honestly don't see Polk uh, breaking this structure unless Bitcoin is closing daily candles below 40K. I bet Polk holds this line. If you see Bitcoin in the 30s, well, that's probably when Polk will probably come down. It'll probably wick below both the or it'll probably wick below the origin line, which would uh, put it back into this zone. See all this structure here, right? It's probably going to revisit the middle of that structure and then decide, you know, uh, with Bitcoin, if Bitcoin doesn't uh, bounce up uh, from 39 or 38K. But Bitcoin 38K, that's probably where uh, Polk will hit. So if you see Bitcoin at 38K, Polk will probably be just under 30 cents, 29.6 cents, something to that effect. Um, if Bitcoin recovers, I mean, I bet Polk might put in some sideways time and then break out, you know, kind of as in my previous videos recovering before this downside. But structurally, this looks very, very good. Uh, Polk and PDX look great. B Pro's taking a beating, but if you hold a lot of B Pro, I already told you the correct mentality to be having those lower price targets. As long as you set yourself up to capitalize on them, you want those because what do you want? Do you want to not sell any assets? And I'm not saying sell 100% of assets. That's why I have a 10 bag and 20 bag and 30 bag theory. Go check out my library section for the thing that says 10 bag. I teach you all about it if you're new here. But that's why you use a little bit of crypto to sell some crypto to get more crypto later, right? So what do you want? Do you want the same amount of crypto when it goes up? Or do you want more crypto when it goes up? Ask, seriously, ask yourself that question. Do I want, when prices go up, do I want the same amount of crypto or do I want more crypto when it goes up? If you want more crypto when it goes up, that means you have to be able to capitalize on lower prices and be taking profits before and then capitalize on lower prices. That's how you do this, right? So just don't... Um, 
times of fear are when you make the most money. You just don't realize it, right? As long as you capitalize on it. If you capitalize on it, then that's when you're making more money. It doesn't feel like it and it feels scary to be doing that. But I promise you, that's when you make you most of your money. So honestly, you know, those, let those red dildos feel good. Um, better than the green dildos, I promise. And y'all just got timified. Take a quick second to hit like if you haven't. Leave me a quick comment, even if it's you suck, LOL, or you suck, you actually do suck. We'll see you later.